Hello, welcome back to another session by Digital Titans and we are going to discuss a very 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 important yet much ignored topic today and a lot of my subscribers have been asking me to uh, make a session on uh, digital marketing strategies primarily when it comes to what should one do when it when when you are about to create a uh, an advertising model for a particular product or a service and where do you focus what do you do what do you not do and things like that so i've been meaning to do this for a long time and thankfully it's it's ready now so so let's let's start discussing about what digital marketing strategy is all about and why did i say it's much ignored and what can one do and and to be honest this can be used as a uh, as a preliminary guide before you actually start building your campaigns right now one of the things that i have observed in my entire uh, uh, journey in digital marketing over the last decade or so is a lot of people are so excited or uh, that they're, they're so into the job that the moment they get a client or a proposal they start jumping into it and start creating campaigns straight away but that unfortunately leads to a lot of drawbacks and there are a lot of drawbacks in this approach and you could lose out on on most of the important things in the long run so to avoid that this session would help you as a guide to uh, it will serve as a guide uh, to know what to do and what not to do when when you talk about digital marketing strategy as such so let's dive in what is the digital marketing strategy now it's something that you need without having to jump in and start creating campaigns thoughtlessly most of the times no offense but sad but true right now 80 to 85% of the specialists or agencies or companies do this they start off right off the bat and then they say that i'm ready to create a campaign because i've got a client now unfortunately it doesn't work that way now you need to understand a lot of things about what the client needs and what does he need in the long run uh, it's it's not always about clicking getting those clicks or impressions or or conversions right I mean, how long can you sustain with this model? Are you in for the long game, long term uh, growth of of the ROI or or a branding of a particular product? Is any day more important than the clicks and impressions that you you get uh, instantaneously, right? Now, a digital marketing strategy will serve as a blueprint which that defines a purpose, a plan, and an action, right? Now, all these three put together, a purpose which which will give you a sense of direction as to which way you are headed that's very very important even before you begin then you have something called as a plan i mean you need a plan to execute right and then there are certain actionable elements that you need to do you need to take into consideration in the process of creating a digital marketing strategy or when you want to advertise using any of the digital marketing platforms now let's see how so i've made a five point plan and i mean inevitably if you if you take anything that you want to achieve in digital marketing uh, this five point plan would help you achieve that right now what what did i uh, what am i talking about i'm talking about five things that you should uh, consider and or, or you can break down your digital marketing activity into these five stages which will which will give you uh, a, a result a good result in the long term in the, in the in the long run of of any of the advertising campaigns for for your clients that you're going to run right now let's say what these five point plan is now the first thing that i'm talking about is clarity of thought the second is you have a plan i mean you need to have a plan three is consistent activity four is analysis and five is following up with with your leads or or, or what your results are all right so what is clarity of thought clarity of thought means that most of the advertising agencies or digital marketers in my opinion lag this because you you just don't have a clarity of thought in the very beginning and if you do not have that if you do not if you fail to have a clarity of thought there is no way you're going to achieve what your client needs or what you really want to do for your client now you need to clearly identify what is the goal of the advertiser why are you advertising you need to start with a why right now once you know the why once you know what the goal of your advertising is then you need to build something called as advertising or audience personas which we will be talking about in some time and you also need to identify what kind of traffic do you need i mean do you need traffic or do you not need traffic what would be the sources that will get you these traffic what kind of qualified traffic do you need now think about it if i am talking about a uh, uh, running a digital marketing promotion for a hospital and if somebody has given me the responsibility to run their facebook page now what if i just need traffic right i mean i need traffic so that people will get to know about my brand now how would it be if i keep 
uh, posting content that's funny or content that's, that falls under entertainment because I know a lot of people would fall for this entertainment and a lot of people would visit my site or my Facebook page. If I do that, I will surely get traffic, but is it qualified traffic? Is it relevant? Will it help me in any way? Now, that's a big question, right? So you need to identify what kind of traffic do you need and what will help you understand that is buying, I mean, building your audience personas. I mean, you need to have a, a definition of an audience. What is the typical kind of audience that you're looking at? Now, once you build the audience persona, then you need to identify what platforms would help me. Now, should I straight away jump into creating paid ads or should I wait for some time, build enough traction online? Should I start talking about my product or my service or should I take testimonials of people on YouTube and then promote it as a case study? Now, what do I need to do? How do I need to, where do I need put my brand? I mean, what kind of traffic do I need and what kind of platforms will help me achieve that, right? Now, once that is done, you need to be very, very, very aware and conscious about your budgets because most of the times what happens is when the client comes, you're so elated, you're so excited that you have a lot of budget. So you, you kind of start investing thoughtlessly on a, a lot of paid promotions. Now, these kind of uh, activities would only leave, I mean, lead you to a path where you will have a heartbroken client at the end of the day and you would have hit a situation, you would have hit a wall where the budgets are over and you have, now you have regained your consciousness. Now you want to, uh, I mean, spend your budgets in a very, very uh, logical way. But now, unfortunately, the budgets are already over because you did, you did thoughtlessly uh, spend on these campaigns in the first three months. So, so that's a big disaster. So one should avoid that state. Now, you should also identify what stage is your business at. Now, is it, in, is it a startup? Is it something which needs a lot of branding to be done? Is it a new brand into the market? Or is it an established market that, has, that is doing reasonably well and you want to capitalize this and, and start a plan for a, a long run? Now, these are some things that you need to understand. And at what stage your business is, that defines and that, that automatically tells you what to do and what not to do when it comes to uh, your digital marketing activities, right? Now, you definitely need to pay attention to what stage your business is at. Now, this is, this is something which that I personally like for the very fact that I have done some of these mistakes myself when I started. And I mean, I mean, we're all humans at the end of the day, right? So you tend to compare yourselves with, with others, you're with your peers, with your competitors. Now, unfortunately, what happens in digital marketing is, let's say if you're talking about two competitors, let's say we're talking about Amazon and we're talking about Walmart. Now, Amazon is the undisputed king of the e-commerce world today, and there's, there's no doubt about it. Now, what would happen uh, if Walmart, failing to understand what they stand for, and if it blindly starts uh, copying or, or replicating the strategies that Amazon does, because it's under pressure now to prove that Walmart uh, doesn't want to fail, now, what would, what would happen? Now, you're competing against somebody who is a giant, who is, who is the biggest player in the e-commerce world. You're forgetting your roots. All you're trying to do is trying to emulate or replicate what your competitor is doing. That's eventually, lead, lead, I mean, that'll eventually lead you into a trap, right? So rather than forgetting what your strengths are, where you should be focusing upon, you simply started doing what Amazon does and you cannot beat Amazon at its game. You need to have a different strategy. You need to have a different plan for yourself considering all these factors. Now, what's your audience? What's your goal? Now, you need to identify what kind of traffic you want. What platforms are you focusing upon? What are you strong at? What your budgets are? What stage is your business at? Now, I mean, if you, if you look at all these things, it will start unfolding a lot of, lot of, lot of insights that you could use in planning what you want. Now, that's the next stage that we're talking about. Now, before we talk about uh, the next stage, which is uh, about planning your campaigns or planning your activities, I would simply want uh, you to pay close attention to what are uh, listed here. And I would also want to tell you what uh, an audience persona is, because we have not looked at that. I mean, you need to build buyer personas or audience personas for your, uh, for your future. Uh, so let me take a few seconds and tell you what an audience persona means. All right. So let's let's take a few seconds and try to understand what a buyer persona is and what an audience persona is now let's say uh, i am walmart and i am trying to define 
different kinds of buyer personas for me, for my business rather, right? Now, what a buyer persona basically does is it helps you identify or, or it, it'll prompt you to answer a few questions about your kind of audience. Now, let's say, is your audience male or female? That's one question that, that you would be asking, right? Now, you need to uh, also say, why do people come to Walmart? Now, people primarily come to Walmart because there is a price quotient attached to it and, and Walmart is known for the kind of prices it offers. Then you have the kind of variety. I mean, you have every possible thing that, that's available at, at your local Walmart, right? And then you have any service-related attachment that you might have. So now if, if Walmart analyzes this by a persona, it gets the following answers. Now, the audience is both male and female. And yes, it needs to target people who are price conscious because that's one of the strongest point of uh, Walmart. And you get a variety of products. I mean, you could get anything from, let's say, a, a, a pen to a, a lawnmower, right? So now these are some things that you need to pay attention to. People, now you need to target people who pretty much fall under both of these categories. I mean, you, you, can, you basically have everything at Walmart, right? Now you also need uh, to target people who are not very, very particular uh, about, let's say, delivering products home, uh, like a home delivery, and you need to target people who are not very particular about cash on delivery, because that's a typical uh, uh, customer for Walmart, right? Now, the moment you define this buyer, right, or, or the traits of this buyer, you know what the audience that you want to target is. Right? Now, once you know what the audience you want to target is, it becomes very difficult, for, I mean, very, very, very easy for you to go ahead and choose your target audience. Right? Now, this is typically what I mean by uh, conducting an experiment where you need to identify your buyer persona. What is the personality of your buyer? Now, a buyer who, I mean, most of the cases here uh, are maybe wrong, but, but I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not very right about people who are uh, focusing on home delivery here or things like that. But this is pretty much what you do. This is pretty much how you classify what your audience is and you would define or you would, you would understand what a typical buyer for you is like, which will help you a great deal in trying to target your audience, right? Now, if you also understand uh, a few things that we saw, once you define the buyer or, or the kind of buyer that you, uh, that you want, now, you also need to understand what your budgets are, right? Now, how much money am I willing to spend on my campaigns? And other things like a location where you want to target your people, what, what location is your primary focus, uh, about how do you attract these guys, as in what do you tell them, uh, would you write ads which are highlighting your strengths or which would attract the user. Now, these things are inevitable, right? So, once you have identified a target audience or a buyer persona, as I may call, now, and what's your goal, right? I mean, that's the most important thing. What's your goal? Now, the goal here is I want to get as many sales as possible, which means my ROI needs to go up. So I have a goal, right? And I need to understand what traffic that I want to focus upon. Now, since Walmart most of the times gives you prices at a very, very reasonable price, and it's, it's, it's cheap in a way, right? Now, if you want to do that, you would slightly want to be careful about going heavy on ad budgets, right? Now, if you can't spend those big dollars like an Amazon or, or an eBay or, or a Flipkart, and you can't go big on advertising on these paid campaigns, and, and you can't straight away go head on with Amazon. Now, for the very, very simple fact that Amazon doesn't hold any inventory, right? Amazon doesn't produce any inventory, doesn't buy any inventory. Amazon is, is just a marketplace. Now, if Walmart forgets that and gets into a competition or a war head on with Amazon and just because it, it wants to compete with Amazon, if it starts spending these big dollars on ad budgets, now it's going to take a hit. It's going to plummet, right? Now, because Amazon can afford to invest high on uh, ads uh, or Google ads or Facebook ads because it's not spending anything for inventory, right? Now, in these cases, you need to be very careful and then you need to find out alternate sources of traffic. Now you need to identify, okay, where will I get the source of my traffic now that I can't spend heavy on ads, right? Now this will be a good place for you to start. Now once you have this, this is when we would go ahead 
and start formulating a plan for the business, right? So let's go to the second stage that we spoke about, which is about plan. All right, so now I have a clarity of thought. I know what my goal is. I know what I have built my audience persona. I identified what kind of traffic I need and what would be the sources. I know what my budgets are. I know what stage is my business at. I also have made sure that I'm not going to copy any strategies here. So the next step in this process is to have a plan, right? Now plan is, is where most of us, most of our heart lies in, right? Because we so want to get those campaigns rolling. We want to build those campaigns. Uh, our mind is racing with ideas. Now I, sh I should create a video campaign. I should run a YouTube campaign. I should look at social media campaigns. I need to invest high on Twitter. Now this is where our mind is, is, is pacing. I mean, it's, it's running, right? Because, because this is the stage where all of us enjoy it. Let's be honest. I mean, I don't enjoy uh, thinking about it. I don't enjoy have try. I mean, working to get a clarity of thought as much as I enjoy building those campaigns. We're all we're all humans, right? So we all want need that action. Now, now is the time where you have the chance to create a plan, agreed, but you need to do it a little carefully, right? Now you can't just jump into things and say that okay, let me build a YouTube campaign, let me build an AdWords campaign. Let me get my ads up on Facebook. Let me let me spend my budgets on display ads, banners, mobile ads. Now you can't do all that. Hold on for a second. Slow down. Take a step back. Think about it. Now say, what is my channel? Where would be my focus be? Now where can I get the most of the audience from while I'm not spending too much of money, right? Now that should be your focus. Now, if you look at that, now what all does a plan highlight? You need to identify your channel. Okay, now that we are at the planning stage, we need to identify our channel. I need to know what my channel is, where would be my, what would be my channel of choice where I would want to advertise. And when it comes to uh, choosing your channel, one mistake that's bound to happen is you just want to be present everywhere. So, I mean, you, you just compare yourself to one of those biggest brands, what they do, and you try to emulate them, right? So, you just want to be on every possible platform avoid that avoid that as much as you can because trying to be everywhere sometimes or rather most of the times will lead you nowhere right so please make sure what your most profitable channels are and you know where you're putting in your buck you know what what is giving you the return now once you have made these uh, decisions now you need to pick your most important platforms now, don't go for Pinterest just because somebody else is doing Pinterest. Don't start investing in blogs just because somebody is doing it. I mean, blogs is a good thing. I, I respect the fact, but don't just blindly do it because the other people are doing it or because of the mere uh, peer pressure that you have where you just want to be everywhere. Right? Don't, just don't do that. Now, understand the fact that channels work differently. Facebook works in a different fashion. Twitter works in a different fashion. You need to use different strategies for these platforms. Now, use a strong lead magnet. A lead magnet is something that you need to pay attention to because it's, it's, it's just like this. I mean, if I am an online training company, I would want to give a free demo as a lead magnet. So lead magnet is something that would attract the user, right? Now, if you say that if you buy with Walmart on a Monday, let's say it says you get a 20% discount or you get a coupon for 20% for of the next purchase. Now that's a lead magnet, right? Now having lead magnets is, is pretty much everywhere. Take a look around, see the different kinds of campaigns that companies run. You will always, 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 always be uh, find that there's a lead magnet to it. I mean, that, that's one hook where companies try and promote things as much as they can. Now there's a small catch here. Now, if I am an online training company and if I'm trying to come up with a lead magnet, so I decide that I would build a, a five page PDF document about uh, my training program. Is that a lead magnet? Yes, it is a lead magnet. But is it an effective lead magnet? I don't think so. Now who would find the time to sit through and read five pages of your lead magnet before they give their email ID or before they even decide to join? If it were me, I would have just given the email ID, downloaded the PDF that you promised and I would have forgotten about it. On the other hand, if you have a very, very effective lead magnet, which is strong, which means that 
sign up with your email id and i would send you a, an interactive video session for free right away that you could watch and also make sure that the video is not like an hour two hours long right i mean you just send like a 10 15 minute video which is which will highlight your training program or or motivate the user to, to enroll in this program. Now, that is what I call as a strong lead magnet. Now, unfortunately, we emulate others and we, we follow the fact that may, I don't want to give away my free content, but I just want to give an e a PDF document. Please understand that the PDF document that you're giving away as a lead magnet is not going to help them. I mean, they don't need it. They're, they're not jumping on their seats for it, right? As long as users do not feel their excitement towards a lead magnet, I'm sorry, it's not going to work, right? Then there is a classic trap, there's a classic, classic trap of people who are very, very, very good in coming up with a strong lead magnet. But you know what they do, instead of giving one uh, free video to attract people for your training program, they say, I will send you five uh, videos, every, I mean, one each day. So I will send you a five video program for free. Now that's a very, very strong lead magnet. And where it gets diluted is the fact that you're giving it to them over a period of five days. Now, come on, I'm going to lose my interest in 30 minutes. You're giving it to me over five days, right? Now, this is where you're trying to tease with your audience a little too much. You're pushing it too far. Now, forget about something good happening this way. It could, it could sometimes not offend, not, not piss the user off, but it will not keep their interest levels high. I mean they would lose the interest levels over a period of time. And the five day lead magnet where you send each video every day will kill the interest rather than doing any good. So your valuable lead magnet, which was very, very effective, just gets ruined just because you, you just tease them too much, right? Now that's not going to work. Reverse engineer, I'm gonna come back to that in the next few seconds. Now you also need to understand that there, is, there are two kinds of promotions. Basically, people might argue there is paid, owned, this media, that media, but forget it. It all falls down, uh, falls, falls uh, under two categories. It's either paid or it's free, right? I don't care if it's shared, if it's owned, if it's borrowed, if it's stolen. It all falls under two categories. It's either paid or free. Now, you need to know where you can le leverage which content. And free content versus paid content is a decision that all the advertisers needs to, uh, need to sit and decide whether how much of free content are you going to provide too much of free content could could land you in trouble making everything paid will not get you any subscribers so you need to hit the right balance between both now identify what tools can you use now this is i, I cannot stress upon this fact enough uh, you need to know what tools to use and i will be talking more about it in the next section that i uh, talk about where i talk about consistency now until then just just let's hold on to the fact that you need to know what kind of tools to use uh, for example, if you're talking about Google AdWords or advertising on Google AdWords, you need to be very, very proficient with Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Now, if you do not know how to use that, that's not going to help you in finding better keywords, right? So you need to identify what are the most efficient tools one could use and put them to use. Now, engaging audiences and converting them are two different things. Now, this is where the line gets mixed up most of the times where I am, uh, I, I misunderstand the fact that I am not converting people, but I'm just engaging with them. Just because somebody responded to a Facebook post that I made saying that he's interested, doesn't mean he has converted and he has paid for me, right? So what you need to do is you need to pay close attention to the gap between engaging and converting. And you will understand what I'm talking about. There's a huge gap between people who, audience who are engaging with you and people who are converting for you. Now, I will showcase that in a few seconds, and I will also talk to you about something called as re-engineering in a couple of seconds. Once we finish that, we would be talking about something called as consistency. Okay, so let's get started and let's try and understand the difference between engaging versus converting, right? Now, engaging is when somebody engages with you either on a Facebook post or on a like, or somebody who shared your content, right? Now, this is where people engage with you. Now, once people have engaged with me, I am assume that they have already become my customers, right? But have you gotten the dollar yet for them? from them? No, they have just engaged with you. Now, there is something that you need 
to do for them to convert for you, right? Now, between engaging and converting, now a lot of us are unfamiliar that there is something that is in between, right? So, we assume that people are engaging with me means I must be doing something right. But understand, now this is a, this is a true statistic, right? 60% of the people who engage with you do not convert if you do not hold them and you do not give them something very, very strong or if you don't give them anything valuable, if you don't have a giveaway or a lead magnet after they have engaged with you, they're not going to convert for you, right? So understand that engaging and converting are a part of the same process, but they're two different things. They're poles apart, right? Now you need to understand this gap and you need to consciously try and fill this gap. Else you could lose a lot of your conversions, right? Now let's talk about something called as reverse engineering that I said. Now what, what the hell is reverse engineering? Are we talking about an engineering project in college? But not really, but if you understand what reverse engineering does to your thought process, you would be amazed to see uh, new ideas flourishing and, and they're all million dollar ideas. So let's talk about re-engineering now. All right. So re sorry, reverse engineering or re-engineering or, or uh, backward engineering, whatever you call them, all it does or all it means is start with the result first. Assume that don't start from the process, what should you do first and then what, what you should do next. Don't do that. I mean, that's a top-down approach, right? Now, reverse engineering is always a bottom-up approach. Start with the output first. So I need sales, right? I need my return on investment, right? Now, what gets me sales? Signups for sure. The more number of signups I have, the more sales I'm going to have, right? Now, how do I get signups? Now, signups, mm, think about it. Where do I get signups from? Now, signups are driven by the traffic that I get to my website, right? Is it only traffic? I need targeted traffic, right? Now, how do I get targeted traffic? Now, if you get targeted traffic by targeting a bigger set of traffic, right? So, you target your relevant traffic first. And please understand that in no way would you target traffic which is irrelevant because I mentioned traffic, right? You would always target your relevant traffic which would give you targeted traffic, right? Okay, now how do I get these relevant traffic from? This is where I need to understand what platforms do I need? If people who are between the ages 18 to 20 who are female who are interested in fashion or beauty, for example, if that's my relevant audience, now which platform is going to give me that? Google is not going to give me that effectively because Google is, some. it works on another, another platform altogether. Now, in this case, maybe Facebook works wonders for me because you have a functionality where you could target people between 80 to 20 who are female and who are interested in something called as beauty, right? Now, this is how you identify your platforms. All right, so now I know what my platforms are, right? Okay, how do I find these platforms? I find these platforms by having a plan. Now, how do I run this plan? If I try and understand what my goals are, right? So, now this is reverse engineering. Now, reverse engineering is something which will steer your way towards identifying your goals and what plan you should follow by starting with your output first. Right now, now I'm saying this because a lot of people have a problem when you tell them to come up with a goal and to, and to come up with a plan. They say, "Come on, I don't, I can't think any of them." Right? I, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I don't know what if it is right or not. I don't know what the output will be. Now, these are the typical problems they face. Now, in such cases, this is something which will almost always work. So you will start with your end result first, and then slowly work your way backwards until you arrive at what you need to do. Now, once you know what to do, then you, you engineer it, right? Now, you follow this step by step. Now, you start with your goals, then you have a plan, then you identify the platform, then you get relevant traffic, then you make sure you get targeted traffic, then you convert your targeted traffic into signups, and your signups become sales when you have a strong lead magnet. So, this is how you work towards the process of getting your plan up, right? 
Now, I have my plan ready I, and my plan and guess what? I don't just have a plan. I have a plan that is in line with my goal, right? So now you don't have one thing sorted here. You have two things sorted. Now if my goal and plan are balanced out, my friend. So now I'm, when I have these things, it's fun because I, I know what to do. And I'm just not doing it anything right off the bat, but I'm doing it in, in accordance to what my goals are, what I want to achieve, right? Now, isn't that wonderful? Now, that's, that's when you have a plan, right? Now, is having a plan enough or does it need anything else? Now, that's the big question. So, we will be talking about that when we talk about consistency now. All right. Now that we're done with the plan, now we need to do, what we need to do is we need to have this plan and we need to execute it consistently. Consistency is the most important thing in any of these activities. Now, you could, you could still survive if you're not 100% on your goal. You could still survive if you don't stick to your plan uh, for once in a while, right? But you will never make it if you're not consistent. Now, you could still survive when the other five points, uh, the, the other four points fall or fail. But if you miss out on the consistency part, it's a 100% sure shot way to fail, right? You will, not you will not succeed. Now, the reason I say this is very simple. If I go to the gym and if I work out for, let's say, 30 days, if I work out for eight hours a day, is it going to guarantee me a six pack or an eight pack? Not sure, right? Now, if I work for 30 minutes a day and if I do it for a year, is a six pack guaranteed? I'm, I'm, I'm more than sure that you would get a six pack at this rate. Now, the amount of exercise that you did here didn't matter. What mattered was how consistent were you with your workouts or with your exercise. Now, that's more important. Now, that's how consistency also pans out when you talk about uh, digital marketing. Now, if you are somebody who seeks long-term results or consistent results, I mean, who would want to run a business that succeeds for one month and fails? Nobody, right? So you want, all of us want to run businesses throughout our lives. And if you want to run successful businesses in long term, consistency matters, right? No one-time wonders here. It, it doesn't just happen. There's, there's no way called, I mean, there's, there's nothing called as one-time one wonder when you talk about consistent results, right? Now, you need to, now this is where a lot of automated tools come into picture. Now, when I say automated tools, it's this. Now, I would want to post things for, let's say, five to eight times on my Facebook page every day. Now, I can, e I can either do it myself or I could appoint somebody or I could delegate it to somebody to, to do it, right? Now, this is human and there is still a chance of error, right? What if at the point in time I want to post, I don't know what to post. I'm not prepared enough, right? Now, this is where the human, uh, uh, what do you say, lethargy kicks in. Or, or the human uh, block mind, block mind kicks in. Now, to avoid these things, what I can do is I can leverage on as much as I can on the automated tools, where the night before I can upload all the things that I wanted to post, and I can schedule them right to to be executed the next day. And and it's there you go. It just just does it at that point in time the way you have scheduled it. Now leverage on these tools. Now because a human might go wrong sometimes, but machines do not. Automated tools do not. They just know what to do. So leverage on these tools. Now, this is kind of in, jun in conjunction with the first, uh, this, the second point that I said, right? Now, when you're using automated tools, we also have a problem where we kind of rely too much upon the, all these tools. We just give, let everything, we assume that all these tools will help me, right? Now, if you're talking about a buffer or a hoot suite when you're talking about social media, come on, think about it. What do they do? They just schedule your posts. They will help you queue your posts or, or curate content in a better way. But is it going to tell you what to market, where to market and how to market? Absolutely not. So don't get fooled by this. Tools will only help you to smoothen it out. They will only help you get it out there uh, in an automated way or in a smooth way. They will never ever tell you what to do, how to do and they will never do any of those things. right? So you need to know where to market, how to market and what to market. You can just leverage these tools. Most of the people, specialists, strategists, trainees that I've trained, they, they, they fall into, the, they, they kind of get so excited about these tools. They say that they don't have, they feel that they don't have to do anything. All the tools will help them do it. Unfortunately not. They will only tell you or smooth out your, your daily operations. 
the thought process, the strategy still has to come from you. Now, you need to know what to market, where to market and how to market, right? Now, schedule emails and newsletters. Now, these are some things that could be off your shoulder. You don't have to do everything manually, right? Now, don't fall into the trap of, over, I mean, of getting overwhelmed with the amount of tools that you have. The basic, most useful example that I can tell you here is when you talk about social media uh, tools, right? Now, we have tools like Hootsuite, Buffer, and Later.com. Now, what do these three things do any different? Do they, I mean, almost everything is the same when it comes to these tools. Now, including the pricing, to be honest, right? Now, should I rack my brains about using these three tools? Or should I just come up with, use, I mean, compare these for a second, pick up one tool and stick to it? What should I do, right? Now, don't fall into trouble. I mean, just go to Google. If you don't believe me, just go to Google and say, uh, uh, best tools for social media, right? Now, you will get hundreds of websites, hundreds of URLs where somebody is saying these are the five best tools. Somebody tells you there are 105 tools. Somebody tells them uh, you are a failure if you do not use these 40 tools. Now, that's all That's all not needed, right? I mean, that, that's all not correct. Don't get overwhelmed with these amount of tools. Otherwise, you would spend years and years and years just trying to understand these tools, not even mastering them. You will just spend time understanding what these tools are, but you will never be good at it. So pick up, compare for, for about 15-20 minutes, take your time, compare them for an hour, pick one tool, stick to it, just, just keep running with it, right? Now that's what matters. Don't ever fall into the trap of getting overwhelmed by, oh, there are so many tools, I don't know what to do. Avoid that, right? Start investing heavily on one tool that you pick up, right? Oh, sorry. I, 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 what I meant was, once you have that decided that tool, now most of the tools that you have, they come with a limited free version, or they, the the free functionality is limited. And if you want these advanced features, you would have to pay a premium, a monthly premium, or an annual premium. Now I don't want to take too much of your time in explaining this. Let me tell you one one guideline of when you should go for a premium monthly or an annual tool. When you start making enough money on your limited version free tool, then think about investing in these tools, the premium tools, until then you don't have to. This is proven. I have tried it. I have failed at it. You don't need to go heavy on investing on these premium tools because almost all of the tools have a limited version which is free. Try that. See if, you can, if you're able to make those kind of dollars. Only when you start making those dollars, start reinvesting them into these premium tools, right? All right, then you have the analysis. Analysis is much, much, much more than running reports. Now, don't be fooled by the number of reports that you have. Don't rely too heavily on data because data at the end of the day is a, num is a number, right? Now, don't, don't get into the analysis paralysis situation where you're paralyzed by the kind of information that you see, right? Now, do not pay so much of overwhelming attention to reports. Reports are just giving you, are serving you uh, as a guiding light to you when you just want to know whether you're going either towards your goal or whether you're going away from your goal. Now, if you figure out that none of these reports are in line with your goal, then there is something clearly wrong. If that is the case, you should go back to your clarity of thought, re rework on the plan, do it consistently and analyze again. Now, now this is a consistent approach, right? Now, do not ever fall into the uh, uh, a situation where you only look at the reports and you don't do anything apart from that. Now, that, that's a bad thing, right? Now, too much of data is hazardous and do not fall into the analysis paralysis. All you have to do is always, always, always tie your data, keeping your, your goal in mind. And if you see that you're not moving towards your goal, goal rework it. If you're moving slightly towards your goal, goal that's fine, then you, you need to continue doing it, right? Then you have follow-up. Now, there's so much of pressure uh, in this digital age to generate results that you, you, you dream about generating those 1,000 email IDs for your next marketing campaign. You see, you, you, you imagine and, and you, you, you dream about getting these 1,000 subscribers for a new promotion that you have launched. Now, once you reach that, once you achieve that, it all falls flat and you, you just eventually give up because you think that's the achievement. I mean, you have achieved it and you just leave it at there. Now, that's, that's very, very bad for the business, right? It's good that you have generated these results. It's good that you have you worked your back off to get these results. It's true, right? But at the end of the day, please make sure 
that you need to nurture these leads you need to pamper them you need to follow up with them right now most of the times we forget to follow up with the clients now we forget to warm them now things that we did until we got them we forget doing it again we forget to constantly engage with them right now that's not done my friend so you need to close the loop champ let's do it right and if you keep these five point plan in mind and if you start working towards whatever we have discussed the rest is history right all right so that's it that's it from my end and if you have any questions if you have any feedback you know what to do as always go log on to www.titans.digital please sign up uh, with your email id and we would be sending you many more interesting updates thank you so much for sticking to me guys thank you so much this is digital titan signing off have an amazing day cheers